Hello Sigmas. In my previous video on momentum, we looked into the equation F equal to dP upon dt. That is the force was equal to the rate of change of momentum. Now we are going to look into some of the consequences of this equation. But before we do that, if you have not watched my previous video, do check it out because uh, that is a prerequisite to this video. So you need to watch that first to understand what is going to uh, happen now in this video. Now we have, uh, we are kind of used to the definition of force to being equal to mass times the second time derivative of position vector, which is uh, the acceleration of a body. So we are used to the definition M into R double dot, right? The second time derivative of a position vector. But if I'm defining it this way, whose position vector am I speaking of over here? Because this definition is true not only for a single point like particle, but it is also true for an extended body. So if I have an extended body whose uh, position vector is this, because this body contains not only one molecule, but an infinite number of molecules. So whose position vector am I speaking of if I make such a definition? That is what we are going to find out in this video. But uh, let us make the definition first. So let us say we define a position vector, which we do not know what it is, but we are going to soon find out. And we try to discover what that position vector actually means, which is kind of weird, but that is what physicists have done in the past. So let us see uh, what this means. If uh, we define it this way, we can actually write dt upon dt as uh, d by dt of the sum. This uh, we have done in our previous video from j equal to 1 to n of uh, mj times rj dot. And uh, what I can do now is take the time derivative, that is, this is the time derivative of the position vector, right, of any, of the i of the jth particle, right, if there is a jth particle over here, then this is going to give the position vector of that jth particle. So this is the time derivative, mass times the velocity of the jth particle, which is the time derivative of the position vector of the jth particle. And you know from my previous video that we can take this time derivative outside the summation symbol. It does not really matter because of the distributive property of derivatives. So we are going to get d square upon dt square of a summation mj rj, right? No more that dot will be present above rj because that is gone. And we can write m into r double dot again. We can take, since mass is the constant, uh, we can take that d square, the time, double time derivative out. So that we get d square upon dt square of mass times the position vector of something. And now this is true, as you can see, this will be true only if mass times the position vector of that something is uh, equal to j equal to 1 to n mj rj, okay? And this gives some position vector, okay? 1 by n, summation j equal to 1 to n mj rj. And now we see what that position vector is. And uh, this position vector is actually in, called the center of mass of a body. And why it is called the center of mass? We are going to see now. Remember in my uh, previous videos, we have treated any extended body like a ball or a block as a point like object, that is we applied the force and accelerations only to a point on those objects. That point is nothing else but the center of mass of the body. That is 
we can treat extended bodies as if all of its mass is concentrated at a point and that is why it is known as the center of mass of that body now this definition uh, you can use it only for translatory motion because for rotational motion as we are going to see in my future videos i'm going to make a videos on rotational motion soon you will you are going to see that the rotation of our object actually depends upon the shape of that object but when you are speaking of translatory motion having the uh, knowing the center of mass is just enough well this definition of center of mass where we have uh, the summation is uh, true only if we have a finite number of particles in that body that is we can consider a massless uh, box in which there are a lot of uh, balls kept like and uh, we can find the center of mass of this ball but where we can count these balls this is ball number 1 ball number 2 ball number 3 ball number 4 5 6 and 7 right we can count the balls in our hands or then maybe a uh, hundred balls or a uh, thousand balls but what if we have an extended body like this we have a solid box or a solid sphere then how many molecules are present in this box we know that 1 g of uh, uh, any substance contains uh, 10 to the power i guess uh, 23 or 10 to the power 26 number of uh, particles right i'm not really sure but a huge amount on a number of particles similarly any extended body will have actually an infinite number of particles and how do you find the center of mass of such a body so if you can count this uh, the particles of the body in your hands then this is known as the discrete masses these are known as discrete masses but and uh, these bodies extended bodies where there are infinite number of particles are known as continuous bodies so how do you calculate the center of mass of a continuous body let's see what happens to the definition of center of mass for a continuous body so here from this definition of center of mass which i shall call 1 so from 1 you can easily see that r is equal to 1 by m now we had certain number of particles which we count we could count uh, on our hands on our fingers but now we have an infinite number of particles so we are going to say limit n tends to infinity summation j equal to 1 to n uh mj rj and here you can see if you have studied integration then you can see that this is exactly the definition of an integer so if for an continuous uh, uh body this uh, sum actually becomes an integral of uh, rj dm and i'm going to drop that j so it will just become r d n because they are having a integral now not a sum so we do not really need a dummy variable now what we can do is a one upon m integral r this d m we can write you know from my previous video we can write it as the density of a body times its uh, element free volume that is dv as there is small volume right we can do that so that this integral actually becomes a volume integral now don't be very concerned if you do not know how to calculate volume integrals because i am going to teach you that uh, when i make uh, examples videos in my future uh, that is i am going to solve some examples where we are, we are going to find the center of mass of various uh, continuous bodies so do not be worried about that for now you should just know that center of mass is defined in this manner 
for a continuous body. Now let's say instead of one extended body, we have two, right? So this is, let's say one of the extended body and uh, there is another extended body. That is the two bodies. And I want to calculate the center of mass of this as a system. That is, if I consider this two bodies as a system, then I, now I want you to tell me the center of mass of these two bodies. Then how would you do it? I'll teach you that. So what you have to do is find the center of mass of the first body and call it R1. Then find the center of mass of the second body and call it R2. Then the center of mass of the system as a whole would just be M1. Let's say this has a mass M1 and this has a mass M2. Then the center of mass of these uh, two bodies considered as a whole would be M1 plus M2 R, right? Would be equal to M1 R1 plus M2 R2. So R would be equal to M1 R1 plus the M2 R upon M1 plus M2. So you can easily see what you have to do when you have more than one continuous body and you have to find the center of mass of those two bodies. All you have to do is that you have to treat each of the body again, as we have done in our previous videos, as if those bodies are concentrated, their masses are concentrated at their center of mass, right? If this is the center of mass, then if you treat them as if they are, all their mass is concentrated at the center of mass, and then you reuse the definition of center of mass like this. So this was all about center of mass. And as, as I promised you in our future videos, we are going to look into some very interesting questions of uh, center of masses of various bodies, right? From discrete to continuous and all types of bodies. But to motivate me to create such videos and make more such fun videos, do subscribe to this channel and do not forget to like this video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.